Hey guys, Jack Spirico here. Welcome to Jack's Low Carb Journey, episode 35, I think. Yeah, that's right, episode 35. Uh, today we're going to be answering a question that uh, came in from the haul out I did on Facebook uh, of questions people wanted me to answer in this, and it is, why aren't my ketone levels higher? Now, I'm going to tell you that the answer you're going to get from me today on this is limited in scope and it's limited in scope because I don't really care what my ketone bodies in my bloodstream are. Um, I haven't really tested it and I'm not probably going to anytime soon. I might at some point out of intellectual curiosity uh, get a blood ketone meter. It is the most accurate way to check your ketones and uh, they're available on Amazon and places like that and it's a lot like checking your sugar levels except you get a ketone reading instead of a blood sugar reading. Uh, that's actually a good way to understand this though to a degree. Um, there's also pee strips is another way and breath meters and again blood is the number one gold standard for it. The pee strips are pretty much useless except when you start. And the reason is if you have a lot of ketones in your urine, that means that you're making a hell of a lot more than you're using and you're peeing them out. And about the only time that happens is when you first go into ketosis and your body's not used to using ketones, it's not used to fat burning, it's not fat adapted yet. So you're producing a ton of ketones. And this is one of several reasons we have a big weight loss a lot of times in the beginning. Uh, one is we start producing all these ketones and the body's not really burning them yet and we eliminate a lot. Like I've said before, this idea that you can just not worry about calories at all. We're going to revisit that, by the way, because the people that say don't count calories make a lot of good points. All right. And there's, there's a place for that mentality too. It's just not all the time. Uh, but initially you can end up expending a great deal of energy in the form of unburned ketones in your urine. But as soon as your body starts burning fat, which is what we're looking for, and actually using it too, those ketones in your urine are going to plummet, right? Now, we are going to have ketones in our blood, but these people that are expecting to have like, you know, seven millimoles of ketones in their blood all the time and, and, and what have you, it, it's, it's not really a, a thing. It's not really a good thing. And I'll tell you one of the supplements that I just despise, and I just think don't, don't think there's a place for it. And, and one of the people that I really admire in this industry, uh, does a great podcast I listen to from time to time, et cetera, sells them. And I won't say who it is, but I still think that like he's selling snake oil. I, he might even believe in what he's doing, but he's selling snake oil because what is an exogenous ketone? An exogenous ketone is a ketone body. So you're taking ketones to be in ketosis. And sure, it'll up your blood ketone levels because you're eating more ketones. What is a ketone? It's energy. So while you're trying to get your body to burn its reserved fat so you can lose weight, assuming you're doing this for weight loss, you're giving it basically the same, it's the same principle as giving it more calories. You're just giving it in the form of ketones. Now, you might make some athletic uh, uh, reasoning for using something like an exogenous ketone is, a, is an energy booster uh, instead of something like, let's say, um, a person boosting energy with donuts right before a marathon. But remember, ketones and high-quality fats are short burst energy. There is a place for glucose in endurance sports and things like that, though your body can probably make most of it on its own. Um, so even that's limited. So even that's limited. But let me just start off before I even explain the things that can cause you to fall out of ketosis, not be producing ketone bodies, et cetera, and how you can maybe rectify that. Um, when you go into ketosis, your body starts making ketone bodies, and you're, you start using them. If you were to check your ketone levels throughout the day, they should and will do this. Because let's say that you need energy so your body makes a whole bunch of ketones, burns fat. Whether it makes it from the fat you consumed or fat in your body, whatever it is, it makes a bunch of ketones. Why is it making it? Is it making it just because you're eating a high-fat diet and it doesn't know what to do other than make some ketones because it's bored? Or is it making those ketones so that they can be sent to your cells, uh, taken up in the mitochondria and used for energy? Well, it's the second one. Your body's making ketones for energy. So let's say that you make some ketones and then you get physically active. Well, what does your body do? It 
sucks those ketones up. So your blood levels are going to go down. You can have lots of ketones being used, but your blood levels will be relatively moderate. So uh, what people say is that one to three millimoles per liter of ketones in your blood is optimal. To me, if your blood levels are a half a millimole or higher, you're in some form of ketosis, and it's high enough. And I even think when you're up at three, well, then what are we doing with all this extra ketone in our blood? I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying if it's there all the time, then what we're doing is we're, we're making them in, in, in excess of what the body needs. And if it's if you're dropping weight like crazy while it's going on, okay, that means maybe your body is you know burning fat and eliminating some of it because you don't need it, and, and that can be okay. But when you see people talking about, oh, I'm at a five, I'm at a seven, like that doesn't make sense long term. So what are the reasons, though, that we can not be making ketone bodies and not be in ketosis? First and foremost is too many carbs. A lot of times people that are really big on the keto treats and stuff like that and zero-carb bread and shit, and they're eating tons of starches, and they think, well, it's, it's, it's a starch, but it's a fiber starch. So it's a, this is why I'm telling you guys, especially in your first 40 days, stay away from the keto treats, stay away from replacement therapy, stick to whole foods, and then you can add some of that stuff in it. It needs to be in moderation. It doesn't need to be every day that you're eating keto bread or keto candy or keto cake, you know, keto waffles and shit like that. You really need to stick to whole foods, especially in the beginning until your body adapts. So a lot of times you tell people, people tell you that, and then, you know, they went out to the grocery store and found the zero carb bread and the first ingredient on it is potato starch and the second ingredient on it is wheat starch and the third ingredient on it is freaking tapioca starch and yeah fiber we can we've talked about net carbs and all but when the fiber is stupid high when you're looking at it and there's like 40 carbs and two slices of bread but a zero net it doesn't work that way um that's one way carbs get high another way carbs get high is people that are new to keto and they listen to the whole, you know, calories don't matter and vegetables don't count. <laughs> That's not how that works. And uh, then they say, well, carrots are okay because they read a paleo blog that thinks they know what keto is. And they're eating a massive amount of vegetables, including massive amounts of vegetables like carrot. Um, they're getting carbs from a source that they're not counting because they don't think they have to count their calories. Or they don't have to count their carbohydrates from broccoli and carrots. Well, you do have to count them. Okay, so that's that's a reason enough right there. The carbs get high. Next is not enough fat. Not enough fat. You know, when when we say keto, ketogenic diets are seventy percent to seventy five percent fat, we're not saying like if you feel like it. I mean, when you're looking at and tracking your macros, you should be in that range of seventy to seventy five percent fat. And if you're not. You're not going to get into ketosis. Hold on. i got to let the dog out. I'll be right back. Just out of my office. I'll be right back. I don't really have a way to pause an iPhone in videos like this. Get on out of there. All right, guys. Coming back at you. Sorry for the interruption, but I just don't have time to, to redo this video today. So that's the other reason is that your fat's too low. And your third reason, as you might have guessed, since we're talking about macros, is your protein's too high. And a protein can be too high because of the ratio to fat, or if you're over-consuming calories because you believe the lie that calories don't matter, and even though you're getting, you know, you're you're getting as much fat as you need to, or even if your ratios are right now, you're pushing your fat consumption higher than it should be, and you're bringing your protein consumption along for the ride. Now you are in excess calorie mode. Now your body has to do something with the excess calories. People that tell me calories don't count. What I always say to them is, okay, well, let's say that we have an open, we don't have a person that's that weight and healthy and is occasionally overeating. We got a person who's 40 pounds overweight trying to burn 3,500 calories of fat per pound they want to take off their body. They consume 4,000 calories and they burn 2,500. Where did the other 1,500 calories go? We know that your body can eliminate maybe at the most under optimum conditions 5% of those calories. So then where'd the other 1,400 calories go? Well, they get turned into energy. And where's the pro how does protein get turned into energy? It gets turned into glucose. Plus, we have a huge surplus of fat because we're over-consuming. 
So overconsumption, even if we keep the ratios right, can drag the protein up. Now, I don't want y'all to get freaked out. If you look at your macros at the end of the day, and you went over protein by five or six grams and a little under on your fat, and it put you in about the caloric place you're supposed to be, don't get upset about that. Try not to do it every day, but you're not going to nail them perfect every day. It's okay. And kind of this is my big thing. If you're losing weight and you're getting the results you want, don't worry about if you're in ketosis or not. You probably are, at least some of the time, and don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. And this is not a this is not like, oh, because this number says this thing when I stick my finger, um, I'm good. Because what if that number's right, but you're not losing weight? I will say the, the time to start looking at this is if you're plateaued for like 20 days, you haven't lost a pound, and you feel like you're doing everything right, this might be a place to look. If you do that, another thing that you really need to think about with checking your ketones is your time of day. When you get up in the morning, your body makes glucose. Whether it's glucagon stored in your muscle, whether it's breaking down some of your own body's proteins, uh, whether it's some food that's still stored and in, in, in available in your intestinal tract and things like that, your body, when you wake up and you get going, your body makes glucose. If you don't eat anything, your body makes some glucose. So if your glucose goes up, your ketones are going to go down. So you need to check your, your ketones throughout the day, just like a diabetic would check their blood sugars throughout the day to get more of an average. The other thing is exercise. If you're really doing a lot of endurance exercise, especially like long duration exercise, your body's going to make glucose. That's not bad. It's just what's going to happen. So if you're having trouble getting into ketosis, you might actually back off specifically the endurance exercise, the cardio, the long duration weight training and things like that. Maybe not, that doesn't mean don't do it, but it means maybe do it one or two days less a week so that we can at least get those days into more of a ketogenic environment. And rem remember, like you can have a lot of ketones and then you do that high intensity exercise. And the first thing your body does is burn all those ketones that are in your blood. And when they're gone, well, it wants some glucose, so it's going to start converting protein protein into glucose, or it's going to take uh, the, the carbohydrate reserves that are stored uh, in your muscle tissue and use it. And that's okay. Again, as long as your numbers are going in the right direction. Um, ways to up your ketones, up the fat, keep your, your macro ratios right, don't overconsume calories. And when I say don't overconsume, I'm not saying if you have determined through macro calculation that you should be on 1,900 calories to flog yourself if you eat 2,100 calories. What I am saying is this idea that we can just consume blindly. And so, you know, you should be around 1,900 and you're eating 3,000. I don't give a shit how much fat you're eating. You're not going to be in ketosis because your body has no incentive now to burn the fat on your body. Why would it? You're giving it everything that it needs in energy levels. Um, and again, back off the exercise, especially the endurance exercises. But again, I'm back to you don't really need to worry about this. As long as you're, you're getting the results you want and you're staying true to the plan, you're eating the right types of food in the right ratios, I don't own a glucose, uh, uh, I'm sorry, a ketone meter. I'm probably not going to buy one. And those piss strips, after about two to three weeks in, you might as well just throw them away. If you're a guy, you're as likely to get a result off of that as if you pee on a pregnancy stick. I mean, seriously, like, it just isn't going to work for you because that's not how this works. When we look at ketogenic diets, I think one of the things we need to realize is it's not all about being in ketosis. This is a byproduct of a ketogenic diet. It is about eating whole foods the way that human beings are supposed to. It's why I said the, ketogen the ketogenic diet is just a form of a paleo diet. That's all that it really is. It is slightly more restrictive in some ways and maybe a little less restrictive when we look at dairy depending on the flavor of paleo. And it's why I think that once you're at weight, kind of a shift more toward a paleo diet for a lot of people makes a lot of sense. Now, some people are going to find that they want to stay really heavy toward the ketogenic side of things. And that's okay, too. But I don't think we really, and this is what we're going to talk about maybe in the next episode is another look at calories. I don't think we need to really sit there and count every calorie when we're healthy, at weight, and where we belong. 
Okay. I think that our bodies have a really good do a really good job of creating homeostasis, and that there is kind of a set point that your body wants to be at for weight. And unless you get stupid, like eating eight pads of butter or something like that, making bulletproof coffee that's not bulletproof coffee, it's freaking it would float your own ass on it. It's so dense. You know, you're you're consuming a thousand calories of olive oil at one setting or something like that. Unless you're doing that. I think you can kind of, at that point, put away the calorie counting. Maybe keep track of it just a little bit to make sure you're not being stupid, right? And we we couldn't have counted calories for the majority of human existence, right? We just couldn't have. We didn't know what they were. Maybe we could look a little bit at portion you know, sizes, but in the days of hunter-gatherers, you ate what was available. And every every creature on the planet self-regulates its weight and consumption except us how is it that everything from a mouse to an elephant can just eat what nature provides and not get type 2 diabetes and not get metabolic syndrome and not be overweight you can say elephants are huge and have a lot of fat on them but they have the right amount of fat for an elephant a mouse self-regulates. A deer self-regulates. A bear self-regulates. A pig, if we're not feeding it corn and we let it live in the woods the way that the pig is supposed to live, it self-regulates. They put fat on them, but they have the right amount of fat for a pig. A deer self-regulates. An elk self-regulates. Why would human beings need to be the only creature that has to regulate their consumption? And the answer is because we altered our food supply. So I do think you can kind of you can actually say calories don't count. I guess we won't make this a twofer and just say we did it, right? I think we can say calories don't matter if we have some level of portion control in our lives and we're eating the right food and we're already healthy. But when we're a 275 pound man, that when we look at the frame, size, height, etc., cetera, it should be a 175 pound man. So 100 pounds overweight. At that point, we do need to look at caloric intake. Because that person is a food addict, like I've said before. And there has to be some means of portion control. And if it's not calories, then what is it? And if it's where you're going to say, well, it's this much food that fits on your plate. You know what you're doing? You're, you're backing into counting calories. You're still controlling the total consumption of energy. So calories don't count, but they do. That's the best way to look at this. And the reason I get pissed off when people say calories don't count is because what is what is going to happen to the person who hears that that's, that's addicted to food? They're going to eat 5,000 calories, and they're going to eat pizza balls, and they're going to eat wisps. They're going to eat all kinds of processed shit that's technically keto, but in, in such excess, they're going to blow their, 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 their diet. And what happens is half of the people do that, and about half of the people, within a few weeks, self-moderate their consumption. They do what they're supposed to do. And most of us will in time. But when you're a big fat ass, you need to take control, and you need some level of portion control. So, hey, we'll call it a twofer, all right? Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. As far as turning these into podcasts, looks like that's going to happen. I've got some help on... uh, Spending all the Genesis episodes, which is everything we've done up till now. If you're listening to that in a podcast in the future, that's how this all happened. And uh, we'll try to get something going with that. Otherwise, remember, the cause of and solution to all your problems is in the mirror. That's probably in your bathroom, on the floor of your scale. It's your friend or your enemy, depending on how you treat yourself. So treat yourself right.